Hello there. Sarah from 17 once again. This is my Star Fox Zero walkthrough. We are returning to Corneria, and this is the Hidden Plans. So this is one of the trickiest missions in the game. It is a bit of a steep difficulty rise compared to some of the other ones, because you're going to notice you take a lot of damage quite quickly, and there's a lot more enemies. But it also means there's a lot more scoring potential, and it's generally a lot more interesting to play, if that's your thing anyhow. You'll notice that I didn't say how many hits it is, and I didn't mention gold medals. Because uh, I did not get the gold medal on this one, guys. Um, I tried, too. I had about three or four attempts, and uh, I just could not get anywhere near it. So, uh, I called it off as a bad job, and the last two levels will not have gold medals. So if you've come here for the medal scores and some helpful strategies for that, these last two videos are probably going to be lacking if that's what you're looking for. So my apologies there, but if you're just here to to appraise how to get through the game should you be struggling which I know you're probably thinking it's quite a difficult game to struggle with but there are some hard moments the majority of the hardest moments are in the areas that I'm not covering though because I'm not doing the optional stuff and the optional stuff is some of it's boring as shit and broken and just really badly balanced but I haven't really talked too much about Star Fox because I've only really played it once and I really didn't care too much for it it's a fun game but I think Lilac Wars was better, and I've expressed a lot of reasons why I think this. And that's the reason why I didn't get the scores on these last two levels. If I'd have enjoyed the game, I would have been eager to do it, but it was just not really my thing at all. And there's a lot of games coming out, so there's a lot of different things you can get into if, if you're playing something that's not to your tastes. For instance, I've just bought a game by the name of Turtles, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and it's terrible, and... I've even cancelled the walkthrough for it because it's just that bad. Which is really rare for me because even if a game is really bad and I've said I've covered it, I'll still kind of will. But it's been two, shall we say, not the best Platinum games on the bounds for me. So I'm hoping that whatever the next thing is that drops uh, is going to bring it back to the level of quality that they usually produce. But right now, these Capit Bombs come in with the fire so try and do your rolls and your evades or get above them if you can and keep on hitting those lock shots and just bear in mind there's a checkpoint when you get to the end of this ravine once you get there you're done and then you can die if need be but to be very careful because there's a lot of stuff here it's way more involved than the other levels and it's moments like this when I really wish that this game had a dodge like Bayonetta because believe it or not the the Star Fox section in Bayonetta is better than this game I think it controls better it runs at a higher frame rate it looks better, like everything about it is just considerably better for me. But 231 hits on the first sequence is not too bad. By the end of this you're going to have to have, I think it's 370, which means we have to do a lot of work in this next sequence. There are some optional requirements here if you can kill 30 enemies in this first sequence, but I've never been able to do it. You just don't get enough time, in my opinion, and I'm just not good enough at Star Fox to, to get it to appear. But I assume it'll spawn some kind of optional villain, you kill them, you'll get an extra 30 points each person you kill, and it probably bumps your score up that way, but without it, it's just really tricky. So, good luck to everybody going for the score. I'm sure there's plenty of videos on YouTube at the moment showing you how to do it, but this is just going to be a walkthrough with some of my observations on it. So what happens here is, it's a dogfight between you and 30 dudes. I say 30 dudes, there's a bunch of dudes here, but some of them don't count, some of them do. It's, it's a bit of a a gangbang of everything happening at once. And then afterwards you're going to be fighting the gorilla thing, the, the mechanical gorilla. And he's the same here as he was when we first took him on. You have to land on the platform behind him in the walker and hack him, and that's how you kind of beat him. He does a lot of damage and he can be quite dangerous, but for the most there should be enough HP around the area and enough bombs to, to make the fight go very quickly. Uh, I'm probably going to use bombs, because bombs are the most powerful thing in the game when used correctly, and I'll just kind of go from there. But there isn't really too much to talk about here, guys, other than this is tricky. You know, some of the other missions, not so tricky. This one, definitely tricky. So if you're having a tough time, it makes sense. It's just like the bonus levels, they're tricky as well. It's definitely where the difficulty in this game shines. But this is probably going to be going up today, the day I commentate it. So I'm going to talk about Turtles a little bit more to, to give some people some information on that that you might be missing. So I had full intentions of playing Turtles and making a walkthrough even though I knew it was bad and even though I didn't like it. But when I unlocked the hardest difficulty, it completely removes checkpoints. And that is a game where the bosses can kill you in one hit 
and they can kill your entire team in one hit, in one move, and if you get lucky, you have to replay the entire level again. If the level was fun, and interesting, and not tedious and awful, I wouldn't mind doing it, because I can do it, I just don't have the patience to want to. Like, it's just like hard. I did every level on hard, except for I think the Karai one, without continuing. And the game isn't that much difficult on very hard, so it's just a case of having a really good run. But this is the type of thing I would be thinking of if I were to cover a game such as God Hand, or insert game that I really like that's hard, you know. Getting a perfect run on those games is something that takes a lot of replaying, but you don't mind doing it because they're really good games. Oh, by the way, you should be spinning the analog here. I don't know what I'm doing. Obviously not having a good day, it seems. I got my ass kicked just then. But if you spin the analog, you'll do the defensive move, and none of those hits will do damage. I go behind him, I U-turn, and then I hit him with a bomb, and then he punches me, deactivates me into the walker mode, which is very frustrating. Then I get out, turn around, pick up the bomb, dump him again, and then all we have to do is hack him. Really simple stuff. This music, by the way, sounds a hell of a lot like uh, the Predator theme. Uh, if you know the, the Predator theme. It's like one-to-one -one as well. It's kind of crazy. And I love the Predator theme, so it's probably my favourite part of this game. But a, a good example would be Vanquish. Vanquish has a difficulty called Godhard, which is insanely difficult. And it has a bonus for getting no deaths. So at the end of the missions, you can do a no-death run, where when you die, you, rest you restart level instead of restart checkpoints, and it's really challenging to do. That's something that is a really tough challenge that involves a lot of restarts that I could do. It'd take a hell of a long time, but it's the type of thing I would be willing to try to do, because Vanquish is really fun. Turtles isn't. Turtle is a game that every time I beat a level on hard, I stopped playing it, and then went and played something that was fun. And then the next day, I'd come back and do another level on hard, because... It is so unpalatably boring to play that game on your own. And I've already told my, my whole thing when it comes to, you know, playing with your friends makes games good. Being with your friends while dying of a terminal illness is better than being alone. You know, friends make everything better. It's, it's hardly a remedy for a bad game. But I understand what people mean when they say that. It's just I don't think it's a valid criticism or, or counter-argument. So, I won't be doing that, guys. If I do anything with it, it'll be a why I'm not covering this game kind of thing, or it'll be a hard walkthrough. And even then, I have no ambitions to do it. There's a new game coming out tomorrow. At the end of the week, uh, Mirror's Edge comes out. I have a ton of projects I'm working on at the moment, so uh, one less walkthrough is not going to be anything off my back, considering you're not missing anything, guys, because the game is, is really average in, in the worst possible way. And I'm having trouble here uh, finding where the hover point is. I'm not too sure why. There we go. It's funny too, you know if I gave that game to one of my nephews when they were younger, they would probably think there's nothing wrong with it and it's a fun game because you just run around smacking dudes, you know, like we did in the arcade playing those old turtle games. But when you come from Transformers Devastation and Bayonetta and Metal Gear Rising and you expect this standard, it just isn't there. It's not that kind of game at all. Like, this is not a game where you attack and counter hit and, and dodge at the right time because it's too chaotic and if you do that, you'll have a harder time. It's easier to just get in there and spam abilities, which is so counterintuitive to the Platinum formula. It's really sad. But this is Star Fox. There was the score, guys. 370 for the gold. Missed it by a large margin and that was when I realised I'm probably not going to play this too much more and then I never did. But thank you for watching. I hope the guide is helping and you take care now.